Om Shanti. Today, it's 12th July 2024. In the essence of the Murli, Baba says, Sweet children, you have to belong to the Lord and Master and then become Prince and Princess. Therefore, Burn your sins away with the pilgrimage of remembrance. The essence once again. Baba says, Sweet children, you have to be belong to the Lord and Master and then become prince and princesses. Therefore, burn your sins away with the pilgrimage of remembrance. Question by using which method is all your sorrow removed? Baba says in answer, When you look in the eyes of the Father and your eyes meet His, all your sorrow is removed. Because by remembering the Father while considering yourselves to be souls, all your sins are cut away. This is your pilgrimage of remembrance. You renounce all bodily religions and remember the Father. By doing this, you souls become Sato Pradhan and you then become the masters of the land of happiness. Om Shanti God Shiva speaks, Sit here, considering yourselves to be souls. The father asks this to you. God Shiva speaks, means that Shiv Baba explains. Children, sit here considering yourselves to be souls because all of you are brothers. All of you are children of the one father. You have to claim your inheritance from the one father exactly as you claimed it from the father 5000 years ago. You were in the kingdom of the original, eternal deities. The father sits here and explains to you how you can become part of the Sun dynasty, that is, how you become the masters of the world. Remember me, your father, all of your souls are brothers. God, the highest on high, is only one. You children of that true Lord are those who belong to the Lord and Master. The Father sits here and explains these things to you. If you connect your intellects in yoga, according to his Srimat, all your sins will be cut away and all your sorrow will be removed. When your eyes meet the Father's eyes, all your sorrow is removed. Baba also explains to you the meaning of a meeting of the eyes. Consider yourselves to be the souls and remember the Father. This is the pilgrimage of remembrance. This is also called the fire of yoga. All your sins of many births will be burnt away in this fire of yoga. This is a land of sorrow where all are residents of hell. You have committed a lot of sin. This is called the kingdom of Ravan. The golden age is called the kingdom of Rama. You can explain in this way, no matter how big a gathering is sitting there. Let there be no hesitation in giving them a lecture. Just continue to say, These are the versions of God. God Shiva speaks. All of us souls are His children. We are brothers. However, we would not say that there were any children of Sri Krishna or that there were so many queens. When Sri Krishna gets married, his name changes. Yes, you would say that Lakshmi and Narayan 
had children Radhe and Krishna become Lakshmi and Narayan after they marry and then they have a son then their dynasty continues you children now have to remember the father constantly renounce all the religions of bodies and constantly remember the father and all your sins will be cut away you will become sato pradhan and then go to heaven there is no sorrow in heaven in hell there is limitless sorrow there is no name or trace of happiness you have to explain to people tactfully in this way god shiva speaks o oh children you souls are impure at this time so how can you become pure you called out to me o oh purifier come only pure ones exist in the golden age whereas impure ones exist in the iron age after the iron age it surely has to become the golden age there is establishment of the new world and destruction of the old world it is remembered that establishment took place through brahma we brahma kumars and kumaris are adopted children we are brahmins the top knot there is also the variety form image first of all you definitely have to become brahmins brahma is also a brahman deities only exist in the golden age in the golden age there is constant happiness there is no mention of sorrow in the iron age there is limitless sorrow and all are happy there is no one who does not experience sorrow this is the kingdom of ravan ravan is the number one enemy of bharat each one has the five vices in him in the golden age there are no vices that is pure household religion mountains of sorrow have fallen and even more will continue to fall they continue to manufacture so many bombs etc but they are not just for storing they are refining everything then rehearsals will take place and it will continue to happen finally there is now very little time left the drama will end at its own time first of all you should have shiv baba's knowledge whenever you begin a lecture etc first of all you always say salutations to shiva because the praise of shiv baba cannot belong to anyone else shiv jayanti is worth diamonds there is no divine activity etc of shri krishna in the golden age little children are satu pradhan children don't have any type of mischief etc in them they say of shri krishna that he ate the butter and that he did this and that instead of praising him they defame him even more they so happily say that god is omnipresent and that he is in you and also in me that is great defamation however tamo pradhan people cannot understand these things so first of all you have to give the father's introduction he is the incorporeal father and his name is benevolent shiva the bestower of salvation for all that incorporeal father is the ocean of happiness and the ocean of peace why is there so much sorrow now because it is the kingdom of ravan ravan is everyone's enemy 
they kill him but he doesn't die here you don't have just one type of sorrow there is limitless sorrow in the golden age there is limitless happiness you became the children of the unlimited father 5000 years ago and you also claimed this inheritance from the father shiv baba definitely comes and he surely does something when he comes he does everything accurately that is why he is praised people speak of the night of shiva shivratri and then there is the night of shri krishna you now have to understand about the night of shiva and the night of shri krishna shiva comes here in the unlimited night shri krishna takes birth at amrit vela not at night people celebrate the night of shiva but there is no date or time for that the birth of shri krishna takes place at amrit vela amrit vela is considered to be the most auspicious time those people celebrate shri krishna's birth at midnight but that is not the time of dawn dawn is around 2 to 3 am when you are also able to remember god it isn't that someone would get up at midnight after indulging in vice and remember god not at all amrit vela is not at midnight at that time human beings are impure and dirty the atmosphere is very bad at that time no one gets up at 2:30 am amrit vela is around 3 to 4 am people awaken at that time and perform devotion they fixed that time themselves but there isn't really a fixed time so you can find out the time that shri krishna was born you cannot find out the time that shiva came he himself comes and explains this so first of all you have to tell people shiv baba's praise a song should be played at the beginning not at the end shiv baba is the sweetest baba of all and you receive the unlimited inheritance from him shri krishna was the first prince of the golden age 5000 years ago there was limitless happiness there even now people still continue to praise heaven when someone dies they say so and so has gone to heaven oh but it is still hell now if it were heaven people could take rebirth in heaven explain that we have the experience of so many years and that that cannot be explained in just 15 minutes time is needed for that first of all tell them that this is a matter of only a second give them the introduction of the unlimited father who is the remover of sorrow and the bestower of happiness he is the father of all of us souls all of us bks are following shiv baba's shrimat the father says all of you are brothers and i am your father i came 5000 years ago and this is why people celebrate shiv jayanti nothing is celebrated in heaven there is shiv jayanti and the memorial of this is celebrated on the path of devotion this is the gita episode being played out the new world is being established through brahma and the old world is to be destroyed through shankar you can see the atmosphere of this old world this impure world is definitely going to be destroyed this is why they say take us to the pure world 
there is limitless sorrow fighting death becoming widowed committing suicide the golden age was the kingdom of limitless happiness definitely take this picture of your aim and objective with you this lakshmi and narayan were the masters of the world we are telling you something of 5000 years ago of how they attained those births what actions did they perform that they became that the father we have such criminal vision here they are criminal eyed the golden age is called civil eyed here the eyes commit a lot of sin there no one commits sin history and geography repeat from the golden age to the end of the iron age you should know why it is called a land of happiness and a land of sorrow everything depends on being impure and pure therefore the father says lust is the greatest enemy you become conquerors of the world by conquering that for half a cycle the world was pure and there were elevated deities there now it is corrupt on the one hand they say that this is a corrupt world and on the other they continue to call everyone shri shri they simply say whatever enters in their minds all of this has to be understood death is now standing just ahead the father says constantly remember me alone and your scenes will be cut away and you will become sato pradhan you will become the masters of the land of happiness now there is nothing but sorrow no matter how many conferences those people have how many gatherings they have nothing is to happen through those they continue to come down the ladder the father is carrying out his task through his children you called out o purifier come so i have come at my own time i come whenever there is extreme irreligiousness they don't understand the meaning of this since they call out they themselves must surely be impure the father says ravan has made you impure and i have now come to make you you pure that was a pure world and it is now an impure world there are five vices in everyone and there is limitless sorrow there is nothing but peacelessness everywhere when you souls become completely tamo pradhan and sinful i come i come to uplift even those who defame me and call me omnipresent you invite me to come to this impure world of ravan to come into this impure body i do need a chariot i don't need a pure chariot in the kingdom of ravan all are impure no one is pure all are born through vices this is a vicious world and that is a viceless world now how will you become sato pradhan from tamo pradhan i alone am the purifier have yoga with me this is the ancient raj yoga of bharat he will definitely come on the household path he comes in such a wonderful way that one is the father and also the mother because the mouth of a cow is needed from which nectar can emerge so that is the mother and father and then saraswati has been made head to look after the mothers she is called jagadamba they also speak of mother kali 
it isn't that she is ugly like that. They have shown Sri Krishna as dark blue because he sat on the pyre of lust and became ugly. Sri Krishna becomes ugly and then becomes beautiful. Time is required to understand all of those things. They would sit in the intellects of a handful out of multi-millions and a few out of that handful because the five vices are in everyone. You can also explain this in a gathering because everyone has a right to say something. You should take that opportunity. In an official gathering, no one would ask you questions etc. in between. If you don't want to listen to that, then leave quietly. Don't make any noise. Explain in this way. There is now limitless sorrow. Mountains of sorrow are to fall. We know the Father and the creation. You don't know anyone's occupation. When and how did the Father make Bharat into paradise? You don't know this. So, come and we will explain. How do you take 84 births? Take the 7 days course and we will make you into the charitable souls from sinful souls for 21 births. Acha, to the sweetest, beloved, long lost and now found children, love, remembrance and good morning from the mother, the father, Babdada. The spiritual father says Namaste to the spiritual children. And we, the spiritual children, also say good morning and Namaste, Namaste, Namaste to the mother, the father and Bab Dada. Lessons for Dharana Point number one. Keep in your intellect the deep philosophy of action, neutral action and sinful action that the father has explained and do not have any exchange with sinful souls. Point number two. Follow Srimad and connect your intellect in yoga to the one father. Make effort to become Satopradhan in order to make this land of sorrow into a land of happiness, make effort to become pure from impure. You have to change your criminal vision. Blessing May you become knowledgeful and sacrifice all your wasteful questions into the sacrificial fire and thereby be free from obstacles. The blessing once again. May you become knowledgeful and sacrifice all your wasteful questions into the sacrificial fire and thereby be free from obstacles. Baba explains, when any obstacle comes, you go into many questions of why and what. To be full of questions means to be distressed. Become knowledgeful and sacrifice all your wasteful questions into this sacrificial fire and your time as well as the time of others will be saved. By doing this, you will easily become free from obstacles. Faith and victory are your birthright. Maintain this pride and you will never become distressed. Slogan To maintain constant enthusiasm and give others that enthusiasm is your occupation. The slogan once again To maintain constant enthusiasm and give others that enthusiasm is your occupation. Acha Om Shanti